Aloha, everyone. It's my 58th podcast. It's the last day of the year, December 31st, 2020. And if you're listening to this, then congratulations, you have survived another year. So what a year it's been. One hell of a movie this has been. So I'm certain there's not a listener out there that hasn't felt a whole bunch of emotions from change to limitations to frustration or some kind of who knows what that has gone on this year. Um, We had this political stuff with the election and COVID in the same year. I mean, that in itself is like, whoever wrote that, I want to have a talk with God and say, wow, I guess you were really testing us. I look at challenges as an opportunity to show up in the greatest possibilities that you would be proud of. So this year has given tremendous possibilities for growth, for change, for discovering more parts of yourself. And I believe that's how we need to view it. So many of us are feeling maybe we're raw or there was too many deceptions or disappointments this year. But now that we've discussed that, I want us to allow ourselves to use our imagination, and to let's learn to pivot this. So pivot is a term where you take a circumstance that's challenging or bad, and your mind, your brilliant, vast mind, that's quite pliable and adaptable, chooses to see it in its most positive form. So the way to do that is first it's important to clear the space that's within your being. If it's emotionally stuck or if it's uh, physically stuck or, or mentally like so many thoughts going on, then it's important to clear that. And how we do that is first by acknowledging it. So if you have someone you, that's, you feel comfortable with that you can share this with and say what's been happening just so you could hear this, like for myself, I went on a long walk a week ago around the lake in Austin at at a distance with my friend wearing masks and and here I've done this for decades and I know self-care and all this but yeah I found just sharing this particular personal thing that was happening in my life that didn't feel like such a big deal but I found it was stuck a little bit and wanted some attention and I just shared it with her and just having someone that I can talk to and hear myself. And she just listened and then gave feedback and asked a couple questions. I got so much clarity and it was so wonderful. I mean, so this is why we do these self-care tools. So either do counseling, which this is why I do these podcasts, is my whole life purpose is to teach and to uh, help people wake up and find peace and clarity and harmony in their lives. And I, and I do uh, online counseling either through Zoom or whatever. So you can contact me uh, and I'll give that information at the end again. But, but first learning to clear the space. If you don't have someone in your life that you trust or that they have enough uh, stability that they can hear more, because sometimes people when they're having a hard time, they feel like they would be dumping on someone. So they don't, so they keep it all to themselves. And That is true in some cases, so really having a discernment to see who is able to listen. Like one of my clients said to me, they texted me and said, I think I want to cancel our session. I'm really in a bad place, and I don't want to put that on you. And I said, if I felt like your challenges and your struggles was something you put on me and it was personal, then I should not be a counselor. Because again, my responsibility and all of our responsibility is to acknowledge if we're open and centered and able to hear another person's sorrows and just be a witness to it without taking it on. And if we 
if it's personal and it hurts us or we want to fix it or somehow our ego gets involved, we're of no help to that person. So we're all here creating these various movies in life where we have these scenarios and it's for a reason that we're here to see what, how could I do this differently? Or what was the purpose of this? Or how can I be a better person because of this? So again, if you have, some, if you don't have someone that you can talk to or schedule a session with me, you can journal. I'm a fan of journaling. So just write, write what's happening, write everything you're feeling and thinking in that moment until it's done. And then when that space clears, then you're able to uh, address what's under the carpet in a sense, or what's hidden or uncomfortable. Then you get from the thoughts to the feelings, which are deeper. And, and in those feelings, so I will tell you spiritually, we're not our thoughts. We're also not our feelings. So, but we have to acknowledge because we're in this human body. And first we have to clear the thoughts like clouds, and then we have to acknowledge the feelings. And it could be as simple. Again, this was with another client that was having a challenge with uh, her mother, and it was very hard for her. And I said, the kindest thing you could do for your mother is to be kind to yourself in the sense to acknowledge when you can't accept, when you are in a place that you can't accept your mother as she is in that moment. And what I'm saying is, is we all want to be this good-hearted person and love our family and friends and partners and be 100% for them. But there are times that we're overdone or we need something more or we haven't been doing our self-care and feeling a little deficient. And and it's like so tight inside that when they do things that we view as harmful to themselves or whatever, then it's personal and we get edgy and we get uncomfortable with it. So, but we're uncomfortable with it because we're judging them. But if you could sit for a moment and take that cleansing breath that I always tell everyone and really see in that moment that I want to have compassion for myself that I cannot accept this situation or how my mother is or how my partner is and really allow that because then you're naming that feeling and I want you to notice as soon as you really bring that tenderness to yourself and see that okay I'm seeing that I I can't do this right now it really does affect me it will start to shift and open in that moment of true acceptance and then again going deeper under the carpet. Then once the emotions are acknowledged and met, then we could get to really uh, investigate what might be happening here. So this podcast is called Possibilities because in order to create change that leads in a direction that is more fulfilling to us, we must first know what we want. What is our deepest desire? Like what is under that deepest layer of the carpet when we really keep digging? So if you were told life is short and you knew you were going to die, then somehow you would live more, uh, you would live differently. You would live with more intentionality, absorbing every little quality and nuance of every moment because you know that it's limited. But when we believe it's forever, or I'm young, so I'm not going to die for a long time. I mean, if COVID's showing us anything, regardless if you believe in it or not, it's real. And I've had many friends and roommates and my son and so many people that have lost someone very close to them. So it is real. I will tell you that. Um, but it's that opportunity with death to pivot and see that we never know when it's our last moment or when someone we love so deeply that it's their last moment and we'll never see them again. So how about we live in terms with this virus saturating our whole planet and saying everybody that matters to me in my life, I am going to show up 
as centered as I can be and as authentic as I can be so that I can hear them, so that I know them, so that if for some unfortunate reason that's the last time I ever have a conversation with them or a walk around the lake or a breakfast or whatever it is, that I want to know I could write a whole story about it because I was so present. I felt it. I could, I could see the look in their eyes or I can hear uh, when something mattered to them or this is what I learned about them and I've known them my whole life. So those things really matter to, to really get that. So showing up with the most authentic you is the greatest gift we can give someone. So I don't know how much time we have and none of us know that. And because of that, let's use that to how do we want to live? And it's not to live in fear. So I had someone say to me, you don't want to live in, you can't think in terms of everyone's going to die and, and live in fear of dying because you won't be living. That's not at all what I'm saying. There's a difference from living mindfully and uh, carefully so you don't infect other people and you keep your distance and your masks and your sanitizing and all those other things uh, and not do stupid things right now. But to really know that I'm living as fully as I can this moment, this day, so that's what defines us and that makes the difference of that this is a hard life or this is a purposeful life. So learning the term to pivot, and I know I've talked about this in other podcasts because it's so important and I remind people that, and it means in the moment, in the moment, when you have the greatest conflict or something that feels so tight in your body or something that you feel threatened by because it's challenging you, because it's changing and it's different, it's not at all what makes you feel comfortable. In that moment, take your breath and ask yourself, how can I see this differently? Yesterday, I don't always want to bring astrology in this because I don't want to offend anyone, but I do see how the, the macrocosm of the stars and the planets and the moon aligning does have to do with our emotional body and with our processes at times. And it was interesting that I was teaching online for a school uh, all week, and, and so I didn't have a lot of personal time, but I had two clients texting me, like wanting to talk yesterday, that were in uh, friends, a friend and some clients and uh, a family member, all in this crisis with big, big things happening that spun them out. And, and I was realizing, okay, well, the full moon was just in, in Cancer, and these are Libra. And it was interesting to see that that's a square. Now, in any terms, what a square means in astrology, if you were really using astrology for personal growth, you would look at how things are opposed or, or conjunct, which is on top of each other, or trine, which is a harmony, uh, uh, like a blessing energy. But a square is, is significant because I was born with a lot of squares in my chart. So I think it's what made me such a great natural coach is because I've gone through, I've walked the path, I've walked... I say, I'm the person you want to hold your hand in hell because I've been there and I've, I've found the light. You know, I've ascended so many times and reborn so many times. So, but this, to, to really know this pivot. So a square is, is, is it's a 90 degree angle, right? So you have someone's view or way of doing things, which is one direction. And the other direction is a totally 90 degree not opposite, but difference from it. Now you'll see that it meets at that little hinge, you know, like a, like a, um, yeah, like an L shape, but it's right at that L shape that it's not this way or this way, but that L shape feels like it's a hit, like it's a knock to your bones, like it just hits you. Someone punched you in the gut and the way you were thinking or doing things or the way they were thinking or doing things has come to a head. It is hit. There has been a car wreck. The opportunity is to see where that hit actually happened, where the collision of two views happened, that that now creates a hold to a doorway 
that has a whole nother view that isn't that person's way or this person's way. It's a third room of space. And it's a third perspective that no one thought of. So it's not about you won or you won. It's about, okay, let's find something that neither of us have thought of before that will meet our needs in this circumstance. So that's pivoting. That's taking a challenge in the moment and seeing the possibilities of something new and how we can respond to that. So I want you to do a little journaling exercise, either in this moment and push pause or later. Um, so think of the last time that you had the greatest challenge that has hit you on a deep level where somehow you felt, um, you know, your whole foundation was rocked and it was, you know, destabilizing. And I want you to write what that circumstance was in, in a lot of detail, as much detail as your mind needs to remember it. And then this will kind of evoke the emotion. And then I want you to write how you responded in that circumstance, in that challenge, that conflict. And then when you're done, I want you to write, if you could turn back the clock and behave in a different way, what is the highest way? What is the, the where you would be most proud of, authentic way? Feeling grounded, feeling safe, knowing that this is change, but I'm, I'm okay. I'm in my little seat of comfort. Uh, my inner child knows I'm here. Everything is just safe. So what is that way you'd like to, to show up? And then I want you to see that this little exercise is very powerful because in a sense, you are repatterning, you are actually rewriting, you are time traveling through your mind. And you're seeing, wait a minute, now I can do this differently. The next step, if you have the courage, when you're very centered and feel very safe, to contact the person you had the challenge with, and to say to them, are you open to me sharing what I reflected on about our last encounter and how bad that was? I'd like to share with you how I would have liked to have shown up. And then share that with them. So don't talk about what they did wrong. This is only about you fully authentically copying to how you showed up and how you felt so fearful or felt so spun out or felt so threatened or so isolated or so helpless or something. And that's, and I must have been so afraid and I acted badly and I apologize. You matter to me and uh, healing our relationship matters to me. So see how that would feel. Think about someone that you've had a fight with and if they shared that with you just how they wished they would have shown up. Now the interesting thing is although this happened in the past be it yesterday or years ago just sharing how you wished it was how you would have shown up in the highest circumstance if you felt safer if you trusted yourself more that person will open to you and the opportunity, the possibilities will be so vast and so beautiful. And you're welcome to do that exercise with every challenge of your life, like one at a time. Don't give yourself too much at once, but just, it's a beautiful exercise. I've done this with clients. I've done this personally and, and it really works. So, the courage to share exactly how you wished you would have shown up. This will bring a lot of new space and possibilities, trust me. Now, my philosophy, my belief is that self-care is the key. It's the key to living the authentic life 
that we want. It's not having the perfect job, the perfect home, the perfect relationship, the perfect children. It's none of that. There is nothing outside of ourself that is stable enough to create this perfect life that I am so happy. But what is within your power is your self-care and what you do on a regular basis to tend to that. Now, <clears throat> I have to tell you that I got into this cookie-making frenzy around the holidays. My daughter is a pastry chef, and she actually was selling cookie boxes to family and friends and did a beautiful job. And, and I had a lot of time and a lot of organic ingredients and just decided and did some with my boyfriend. It was so much fun. And um, so, but there was so much love in these cookies. And part of it is, is that I was really aware of, I would say that my purpose or my heart is opening to the conditions in our planet. Like everybody has things that matter to them. Of course, global warming and everything matters to me and healthcare and all of that kindness. And But what really is affecting me is the homelessness. And I live in Austin and I see it happening more and more, more tents out there. I hear about fires in these camps and people getting hurt and it just really and now that it's cold today it's rainy and in the 40s the high 40s so that really affects me and to think about all the families that are without food and without jobs and homes so feeding the planet and having shelter and safety for the planet really matters to me and I'm gonna see like that's one of my intentions this year is how could I move into that more but strangely, in my own way, I was making all these cookies and I actually gave it to some friends and family members and, you know, passed that on. And, and I found that it brought me joy because it was a tiny speck that I could affect towards something that mattered to me. But unfortunately, they were so good and they were gluten-free and they were with my Kerrygold butter. My daughter had a fit that I was using such expensive butter for and all of that and so much love in it that every day I was eating... I don't know, three to five pieces of love, let's put it. So then I wasn't feeling so good inside. And and I know when I hit my limit that, because it feels like my cells are inflamed. So I just instantly, I do have a strong will, but I said, okay, enough, enough of whatever's going on. And I'm like, I'm going to commit. So this is something I came up with myself. And you are welcome. And so, so please spread the, spread the news. So I started four days ago, five days ago, whatever the day after Christmas is. I have no idea where we're at right now. The day after Christmas, I woke up and said, okay, no more cookies. And I also said that I am going to commit to what I call 30 minutes of self-empowerment. So I personally do French every day on my Duolingo. I've done it for five years now. So I can read and write it. Can I speak it? I don't know, very little. But that's not included. But in my 30-minute self-empowerment, I, I call it 10, 10, 10. Anyone could do anything for 10 minutes. So every day, and I try to do it shortly after I wake up, I tell my Alexa or I set it on my phone and I say, set the timer for 10 minutes and I will work out. Today I did crunches on the ball with a heavy weight and I did squats and I did um, some triceps and or sometimes I do yoga. Uh, I have an app that does yoga. So, But it's only 10 minutes is all you have to do to feel free and that you did your self-care, your love for the day. So I do 10 minutes of working out, 10 minutes of meditation. And again, there's many apps on there online that you could do for meditation or you just sit silent and 10 minutes of journaling. And always I have my phone timer on or my Alexa on. And what you find is every day that I've remembered to just do those, no matter, because I've been very busy. I've been teaching and counseling and family time and all those other things. I feel so good and inspired again. Again, this is what I teach. I've done this for 20 
eight years, okay? So this is what I teach and what I counsel. I've been a life coach for decades, and I still see where I fall, where we're humans, and we forget, right? And then we got to get back on. So it's just finding the pivot and the possibilities of new things. So commit to 10, 10, 10, 30 minutes a day of self-empowerment. Time yourself. And if any of those days, like my son, he started doing yoga with me the other day. And then after we did our 10 minutes, it was 15 minutes. Then he wanted to stretch more and it will inspire you to do more. I did journaling the other day and it was so flowing that after the 10 minutes, I kept writing. I wrote for 20 minutes. It's the same with meditation. I've had several rounds of at least 20 minutes at a time to just sit and meditate because it feels so good. So the body likes to feel centered and spacious and settled, not with the mind jumbled, not with the emotions like a storm. We just want this, this peace so that we can show up and be the greatest, um, the greatest influence to anyone we come across that may have extreme challenges, that may need that, that anchor to get through these storms right now and to use that self-care for your own um, stability, for your own possibilities, is a beautiful thing. I'm going to say one more thing. So we're doing a fire pit tonight. It's raining and cold here, but I have one under my little deck, so it's covered. And my son and roommates were doing this. And, and so I take these rituals seriously with the end of the year, and bringing in the new year. So I'm telling everyone to write on a little post-it, one thought on each piece of paper, and of whatever it is that you're ready to let go of from 2020. It could be, I'm done with COVID. I'm done with death everywhere. I'm done with politics. I'm done with, like, just whatever you want to do. I'm done with um, having conflicts with people with opposing political views. I'm done with... Um, feeling I'm limited and I can't do as much as I want. How about all those things? But just one after the other. And if you want to say it out loud, bring it and let someone witness it or just do it yourself. And, and again, one of my students, I was doing this recently and they're like, okay, we can't burn it. Can we flush it? Flush it if you want. Just do little pieces of paper so you don't clog your um, plumbing. And then when you're done with all that and cleared in their space, then you write on little pieces of paper after stating it out loud to yourself or someone to witness the things you're ready to let into your life for 2021. And don't use these limitations of lockdown and stuff as an excuse. What is really within your power? Like for me, one of my biggest things is to really... I mean, I have tremendous gifts and skills, and I don't say that arrogantly. It's just like I've tended to be an introvert my whole life, and I think it's why I'm so good at communication and and understanding and counseling, because I know how to do these things. I know how it feels deeply, because I'm very self-reflective. But that little walk with my friend was a, a highlight of a reminder of how simple that was to do and to just have that feedback. So my, what I'm going to allow in in 2021 is more uh, knowing that I need people of like-mindedness just for reflection, just for feedback, more than I'm used to. So there are some people that are very good at that already or that go to other people nonstop without uh, tuning into themselves first. I mean, I don't have any fear of that with me. But for me to remember, I don't have to carry that burden by myself, and either do you. Like, there are people that will listen and care for your well-being. So um, I hope that helps. Like, we've had quite the year, and I am going to try to commit to doing more of the podcasts. I was approached to do these little a series of uh, training videos, so I'm contemplating that in the new year. 
and counseling. I do a sliding scale from $50 to $100, depending on what is affordable to you. Just contact me. And I am great with relationship counseling. I'm great with addictions, with cleanses. With I do a 30-day cleanse, all of those things. And a inner child work, healing your past, repatterning your thought process, just getting empowered again, knowing you're strong, knowing that you can move forward to your next level and having the strength without overshooting it. Don't, don't overreach because it will be too much for be kind to yourself and, and that tenderness to yourself. You, the more tender you are to yourself, the more you can offer that to others. So you can reach me through my phone number, 808-283-7587. Although that is a Hawaii number, it is central time in the U.S. And please email me, Samana, S-A-M-A-N-A, at spaluna, S-P-A-L-U-N-A dot com, and give me comments and feedback or topics you would like me to talk about, how you've liked these podcasts and the impact it's had on you. And so many blessings and happy new year and may your new beginnings be bright. Stay safe. Aloha.